One Piece Manga Chapter 1103 titled, I'm So Sorry Daddy. The color spread of the chapter features the straw hat pirates in a festive and joyous mood as they welcome the Year of the Dragon. I don't know if it's just me, but Luffy looks like he's put on some weight. This chapter is a continuation of Chapter 1095. St. Saturn tries to take matters into his own hands and joins in on the fight on Egghead Island. He has captured Bonnie and has a conversation with her about her father and Nika. This chapter is littered with some answers and moments that leave you shocked and curious. We'll discover how Bonnie got her abilities, what St. Saturn's fears are, and the final panel of the chapter that will blow you away. So do watch till the very end of this video. The scene starts with Bonnie taking in Kuma's memories. Dr. Vegapunk asked Bonnie if she had seen everything. Bonnie pauses for a moment and affirms that she did. She finally knows everything and what her father, Kuma, had gone through his entire life. Now that Bonnie is aware of what happened, Dr. Vegapunk feels guilty as he had broken his promise to Kuma. He had originally given his word to Kuma, that he would keep everything a secret from Bonnie. But before he could continue feeling more guilty for himself, Bonnie returns to her original size and gives him a hug. She began crying again as she apologized to him. It seems that Bonnie feels guilty that she had held a grudge on Vegapunk for so long. Before knowing the truth, she had threatened to kill him for turning her father into a mindless cyborg. Now that the truth was out that this was under St. Saturn's orders all along, Vegapunk decided that it would be time to hand over a present to Bonnie. Kuma had left a present for Bonnie's 10th birthday. Upon hearing this, Bonnie got excited and was filled with glee, much like when she was reading the letters that Kuma had written to her. The present was a sapphire necklace, shaped like the sun. Bonnie says that she will treasure it forever. Vegapunk then told Bonnie that Kuma had told him that the necklace is a protective charm. Shortly after, Vegapunk changed the topic to Luffy. Vegapunk finds it hard to believe how much Luffy had become in only two years. Having gone through Kuma's memories, Bonnie knows that Luffy is the son of one of her dad's closest friends. Vegapunk affirms it and tells her that he was stunned when Luffy and her showed up together. He attributes it to fate and says that it's a strange thing. Considering how most scientists would say that everything is predetermined by the laws of physics and causality, it's interesting that a scientist like Vegapunk would attribute something to fate. Even Einstein himself famously said that God does not play dice with the universe. But maybe scientists in the One Piece world have a different perspective. Dr. Vegapunk told Bonnie that much had happened on Egghead Island while she had been in that room. As a matter of fact, the Straw Hat Pirates have just saved Vegapunk. He told Bonnie that he will explain everything and that they will meet up with them when things have calmed down. Vegapunk then apologizes to Bonnie. He feels responsible for everything that has happened. He tells Bonnie that she now knows just how worthless he is. And like a puppet, he's just a mere scientist for hire, just following orders. Bonnie then told Vegapunk that he was wrong. Now that she knows the whole truth, she knows who the real villain is now and who she should exact her revenge towards. Before we continue with the chapter, I'd like to ask if you're new to the channel. If you are and you want to be notified when the latest chapter comes out, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification. <laughs> my aim is to make it easy for viewers to understand what is going on in the chapter. This also helps support my channel with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. The scene shifts to the present on Egghead Island. Bonnie is captured by the very villain, Saint Saturn. Saturn is holding her in the air as several high-ranking marines aim their guns towards her head. Saturn tells Bonnie that her father is truly dead, which angers Bonnie. Frankie, Vegapunk, and Sanji are frustrated that they can't move due to Saturn's powers. Luffy is exhausted as he had used up his strength and energy to stop Kizaru. So now he looks like a dehydrated man. But instead of begging for water, he's begging for meat. Atlas says she would help if she could. But like the rest, she can't move her body either. Meanwhile, one of the Marines has confirmed the capture of Sentomaru. 
Kizaru, still on the ground, being unable to move, could only watch the grim situation of Sentomaru and Bonnie. On the coast of Egghead Island, one of the Marines asked if there is any update on the status of the situation up in the Labo Stratum. Another Marine informs that they are unable to confirm the situation since high-ranking officials are only allowed near the Gorosei. Meanwhile, news began to spread all over the world on the incident happening at Egghead Island. One of the people was shocked by the siege involving an emperor of the sea. The person beside him says that it will be a miracle if there are no casualties. Elsewhere, another person states that the scale is bigger than the O'Hara incident, and he hopes for Dr. Vegapunk to be safe. O'Hara was destroyed with a buster call. A buster call is known as the ultimate form of military attack by the Marines. With a fleet of ten battleships led by five vice admirals, Aokiji likens the strength of a buster call to that of an entire nation's military. The siege on Egghead Island has a marine fleet of a hundred ships, 20 battleships, 30,000 soldiers, and is led by nine vice admirals, Admiral Kizaru, and one of the five elders, Saint Saturn. I wonder if the marines are going to come up with a new name for this siege. After all, this far surpasses the buster call of the marines. The scene quickly shifts to Kamabaka Kingdom, where Dragon is having a conversation with Ava. Dragon asks Ava where Kuma's instincts would take him, assuming there's still a trace of Kuma in there. Ava said that if it was him, he would storm Marijoie for some payback. However, that isn't like Kuma at all. The scene shifts back to Egghead Island. The Marines still have their guns aimed at her. Bonnie decided that if she was going to get killed, she would take the opportunity to attack Saturn. Much like how she defeated Alpha in a single blow, she takes on a Nika-ish form and uses Distorted Future. Saturn was shocked to hear the word Nika from Bonnie. Bonnie tries to land a blow on Saturn, but before she could deliver the blow, she suddenly became weak again. Bonnie screams in pain as Saturn grips her tighter. Saturn says that Bonnie is really Kuma's daughter since she knows the name Nika, Saturn thinks to himself. He realizes that Bonnie has yet to draw the connection between Nika and Luffy's new white form. He tells Bonnie that she does not fully understand its meaning and remarks how pathetic that is. Saturn's attention shifts to Luffy as he hears the sound of food being chomped down. Saturn begins to panic and wants to know who is responsible for giving Luffy food. This is funny. I have never seen someone panicking because a protagonist was given food. Another observation to why Saturn's panicking could also be that his abilities might not work on Luffy, since everyone else except the Marines and Luffy isn't able to move. Saturn orders the Marines to put him in sea stone cuffs immediately as Luffy continues munching on the burgers, apples, and meat. The Marines rush to try to contain Luffy with the sea stone cuffs, Kizaru is now sitting down and is silent as he watches. Could it be possible that Kizaru actually gave Luffy all that food? There aren't many people on site that can move due to the Gorosei's presence. And if there's someone who can do it without Saturn noticing, it would be Kizaru, since Kizaru can move at the speed of light. We all know how difficult it was for Kizaru to accomplish this mission as it involves the people he cares about. Maybe the time has come for us to see Kizaru move from unclear justice to believing in something. I could see that happening, especially after his rematch with Luffy. We've seen time and time again how people have helped Luffy on his journey. Just like what Mihawk had said in Marineford, Luffy seems to rally all those around him to his side. And among all people in the seas, he possesses the most formidable ability. If this turns out to be true, this could throw the Marines as an organization into chaos, especially after Aokiji joined the Blackbeard's crew. Let me know in the comments if you think Kizaru gave Luffy all that food. Bonnie wondered what's with this geezer, as she can't even change his age. She became surprised when Saturn told her that she owes the abilities she has to him. Saturn further shares some cruel truth. He tells her that the world government had conducted experiments to determine whether extract infusions could grant a baby an ability without feeding them the fruit directly. Bonnie is shocked as she looks at her hands in disbelief. 
Saturn continues and says that even though the experiment was a success, the devil fruit itself is useless now. Saturn further adds that the Toshi Toshi no Mi allows Bonnie to transform into a state that matches any future perceived to be possible. But it also means that the possibilities become limited, as her future becomes more certain as she begins to uncover the truth. Saturn concludes by saying that Nika is just an impossible myth that Bonnie wants to believe in. At the same time, Kuma is seen flying through the clouds. Bonnie does not believe a word Saturn is saying. She retorts that Nika is real. She exclaims that ever since Saturn turned him into his cyborg slave, she has been looking for Nika to save Dad. Saturn was certain that her sudden weakening proves that she is beginning to doubt whether Nika's existence is possible. Saturn tells Bonnie that her father just passed on a worthless buccaneer legend. He also mentioned that Kuma once told him that he wanted to save people just like Nika did. Just when you think Saturn couldn't get more repulsive and hurt Bonnie more, he shares more details about her mother, Ginny. Saturn tells Bonnie that her mother was brought to the Holy Land to be wife number eight. He added that he had used Ginny as part of his drug experiments, and just like the other failures, Ginny developed the Sapphire Scale disease. Saturn knew that the results were poor, but he admits that he did not think that the disease would be passed on to Ginny's child as well. Bonnie was stunned. Shortly after, at the coast of Egghead Island, a loud crash was heard. One of the low-ranked Marines wondered if something had landed over there. Bonnie was too distraught to move. She has finally known the whole truth, from how her mother died, to how she contracted the disease, to how Kuma was made to suffer and be a cyborg slave to the world government. Saturn was responsible for every major and terrible incident that had happened in Bonnie's life. Hearing all this, Vegapunk was enraged. He yells to Saturn that the sapphire scales tore Kuma's family apart. Vegapunk adds that finding a cure for Bonnie was the reason he threw his life away. Vegapunk could not believe that Saturn had used the cure as a bargaining chip when he was the one responsible for Bonnie's disease. With complete apathy, Saturn told Vegapunk to look at things from his perspective. He asked a rhetorical question. Would he comprehend the feelings of the insects he steps on? Of course not. Back in Chapter 1090, we discovered how Saturn views humans in general. Saturn said that human life holds no more value than that of an insect. With that belief, it's no surprise to all his actions and decisions so far. Bonnie was still shocked by all that she heard. The scene shifts to the southwest coast of Egghead Island, where the crash was heard. A small group of Marines wondered if it's a pacifista that had landed. One of them begins to tremble in fear as he realizes something. He told the rest that it is not a pacifista as he has paws in the middle of his palms. In a state of panic, one of the Marines made an urgent report from the southwest coast. The ex-warlord of the sea, Bartholomew Kuma, has arrived. He is heading straight for the center of the island. The Marine concluded the report by saying, there is no way they can stop him. Their authority chip commands are not working. Saturn is shocked and confused. He wonders how Kuma could possibly be here, especially when Kuma's sense of individuality was erased. Bonnie was still frozen and scared. Unable to recover from the cold, hard truth that Saturn had shared with her moments ago. Vegapunk is just as shocked and confused as Saturn is. As Kuma began to run forward, the Marines were ordered to stop him. They began to fire at Kuma. Bonnie is unable to speak. Kuma continues persisting forward, receiving all of the attacks from the Marines. As Bonnie is there, witnessing all the damage that is being done to her father, she feels like her heart is shattering. Some of the Marines have begun using bazookas and fire at Kuma, trying to bring the cyborg down once and for all. But Kuma keeps running, just like he had all his life. One of the Marines yelled to continue firing at Kuma until they're all out of ammo. As the damage on Kuma began to be more severe, 
Bonnie could not take it anymore and cried her eyes out. She believes that at this point, she'd be better off dead. Vegapunk and Sanji could only look at what's happening. Kuma continues running forward, knocking aside everything in his path. From higher rank marines to vice admirals to pacifistas. Saturn demanded Bonnie to be silent, as all that shrieking is unbearable. She continues to cry profusely. Saturn tightens his grip on her and orders the marines to blow her head off. But Kuma would not let that happen to his daughter. He wipes out all the marines with a single move. The marines' effort to annihilate Kuma and Bonnie was in vain. Saturn then decides to take matters into his own hands. He throws Bonnie to the ground. As Bonnie is falling, she apologizes to her father for wasting the life he had fought to give her. Now that Bonnie is on the ground, Saturn tries to crush her with one of his spider legs. But before it could reach her, it was intercepted with Kuma's paws. He then carries Bonnie as he receives another attack in place of Bonnie yet again. Kuma holds Bonnie close to his heart. Bonnie cried out to her dad, but he did not respond. Only mechanical sounds came out of Kuma. Completely enraged, Saturn shouted Kuma's name as he attempted to land another blow on the cyborg. Kuma grabs Saturn's blood-covered spider leg. Kuma then raises his fist as Bonnie continues to cry. Kuma prepared to unleash his wrath and anger with a hockey-coated punch to Saturn's face and the chapter ends. The momentum is beginning to shift. Will Kuma be able to successfully deliver that punch into Saturn's face? If so, I hope that it is as epic as the time that Luffy had punched St. Charlos in the human shop. But the bigger question is, how is Kuma able to act the way he is? His sense of individuality was erased, as we had seen in the previous chapter. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts and possible theories. Press like if you enjoyed the video and if you don't want to miss out on future One Piece chapters like this one, definitely subscribe and hit that bell icon. See you in the next chapter.